Good gravy. That took forever today. Can't connect with, uh, unable to connect the chat. Well, apparently I don't have any chat this morning. I'm not surprised. I'm 20 minutes late because I experienced that reality that living in Costa Rica in a rural section of Costa Rica is internet. I rebooted probably 50 times today. It's just one of those things I can't seem to help here because we're in a rural area. We're not actually in Tamarindo anymore. When we moved out of the Villa Real area and bought our house three years ago, we moved into a very rural area. So I may be streaming from here from now on because I really like this. I got my rocking chair. I'm an old granny. I got my new chest that I got the other day. You should see it. It's all carved and crazy fancy. Let me see if I can move my a little bit. You can't hardly see it. But got all my good Costa Rican furniture here. And I'm very comfortable, very comfortable. Um, I want to talk about house buying today. I don't know. I don't know if you can see the pool out there, too. Because the pool is right behind me. Um, it's a bit of a challenge if you're buying a house here. Here's the thing. In the States, you go to your bank, you get pre-qualified, you, you go for a loan, you go, they tell you how much house you can afford based on your income and what your expenses are and all that, and you go from there. That doesn't work in Costa Rica. Costa Rica, the banks only offer mortgages to people who are citizens and maybe the occasional legal resident. But it's not as easy to get one as it is in the States. You're somebody on a tourist visa trying to become a Costa Rican resident. There is no possibility of you getting a bank mortgage. What they do have is they have um, private mortgages, but you may have to end up paying as much as 50% of the down payment on that. And uh, the rates are not good. It's not like in the States right now. My daughter is buying a house right now, one of my kids, and she's paying 2% or less on her mortgage. Kind of blows my mind 30 years ago we bought our house we were happy to get 12 percent anyway on the house buying on the, the crazy house buying stories so you have to have cash if you're here cash cash is key cash for the merchandise cash for the soft goods cash for the hard goods freaking in the piggins i can't remember all the lyrics to that stupid song but you have to have cash cash is king here if you don't have cash you're going to have a hard time buying because of the, the unique lack of mortgages here. And the fact that the bank here is not going to help you. Um, so we rented in Villarreal for about six months, which is just outside of Tamarindo. It was a beautiful house. We liked it. But the landlord decided to raise the rent from $600 to $900 a month after we'd been in there six months. And we were kind of like, uh, no, you need to repair X, Y, and Z before we even consider that because there were some problems with the house that the owner never would fix. And so it was a problem. So we looked at each other one day. We're flying back from the States and said, flying back from my mother-in-law's funeral, no, no less. And looked at each other and said, let's buy a house. Let's buy a house here in Costa Rica. We have the money. We might as well. We're not going back to the States. So we did. We bought a house. And it was the most nerve-wracking experience of all time. We knew we did not want to live in an American compound with a bunch of other Americans. There's nothing wrong with doing that if that's your thing, but you're going to pay. That's expensive, and that usually involves a private mortgage, usually with builder. And like I said, you could end up owing as 25 to 50% in down payment of cash and paying a high interest rate for the, for the balance. Most of those communities have HOAs that start at about three to four hundred dollars and go up. I've seen HOAs here that charge as much as a thousand a month. There's Vista Del Mar, there's um, I can't even think of P Pinellas, there's a big one there. And I think that was somehow connected with don't quote me on this. Uh, I can't remember if it's Weston or it's one of the other big um hotels. They're connected. They do all that. Um, and that's fine. The houses are beautiful. The grounds are beautiful. You have two or three guard gates. You got guys with guns. 
if that's what you need, go for it. I'm not going to throw judgment at you, but I knew that that was not what I needed. I knew that I would feel very uncomfortable huddled with a bunch of Americans in our little safe society. We knew we wanted to live out in the middle of no, well, we knew we wanted to live someplace that was comfortable for us. We lived in a Cape Cod for 30 years with the most steep stairway. We knew we wanted a ranch house. It had to be all one level. I really wanted a tiny home. I could not talk my husband into it. I tried, but somehow we've ended up with a house twice as big. It's our old house and it somehow it works for us. Um, it's a Costa Rican built house here. It was built by a Costa Rican family out of San Jose, a bunch of lawyers. This was their weekend place near the beach. And we got a bargain on it. But here's the thing, you're gonna be looking at a trip, you're gonna be looking at a lot of houses quickly. Houses here don't sell quickly, they take forever. So if you buy a place and you turn around and you sell it, you're gonna be waiting a little while. There's a house that we looked at that it was on my list of uh, possibilities. My husband did not like, it's still on the market. And it started at like close to 400,000, it's down right now to close to 100,000. It sits on a mountaintop on two acre lot. You have a uh, view of the Pacific Ocean from the back of the house and both sides of the house. It is the most beautiful Italian villa. It had bats all in the belfry when we pulled up. That was kind of strange because my realtor started screaming like a little girl and ran around. I like bats. I found that fascinating. So I went up to look at the bats. The place was is beautiful. It's 4,000 square feet. The top floor is a is the entire uh, the entire top floor is the master bedroom that leads out to a huge balcony and you're looking at the ocean. The bathroom was fabulous. There were four shower heads and it was a giant tile room. You stand in the middle and get your shower on. There were so many things I loved about that place, but I could not get my husband to like it because the roads were bad. So that was ruled out. We looked at a place that was was obviously it was a surfer's kind of shack that they had redid. It was gorgeous. Um, it just would not have worked for us because there was no storage, and it was a smaller place and it was not set up nicely like a tiny home. Tiny home, so I would have had to put a lot of work into that. The main no no for that one, and it was across the street from a world famous yoga spa. The main no no is you're not on public water. That's one of the things you have to consider when you move here. If your place is on the, the Asada, the public water supply, it's better if it is because when dry season hits and we're in the middle of dry season right now and the aquifers dry up and your water tank empties, guess what happens? You have to pay and sometimes quite a lot to truck water out to your place. You have to hire somebody to come truck a big truckload of water and uh, that can get costly. So you have to figure that sort of thing too. We looked at a place that I just looked at was like, no, right away. That was very near the beach in, um, not in Pinellas. Maybe it was Pinellas. It was one of the local beaches around here. Um, it, the house, I just, the minute I walked in, I started flipping out because it was chock-a-block with everything under the sun. It was the tiniest little house. It was obviously they'd taken a little tiny cottage that was meant for surfers and had turned it into their home. It was lovely. I could not handle it. It was so many things in there and leaving everything. And the bedroom had just enough room to put a mass, to put a regular size mattress and a TV at the foot, and that was it. The kitchen was a closet. You could literally stand in the kitchen and do everything. The living room was so cram packed with stuff that you just couldn't move. I just kind of went into ADD meltdown when I went into the house. The worst thing was the pool was not much bigger than where I'm sitting right now. It was a pocket pool and my husband swims laps. We needed a pool with some length. So it was just like, no, and that one was expensive. That place was expensive. They, it was priced way out. I don't know if they ever sold it. Uh, the next house we looked at, would have been perfect with me, but my husband said, no, that was on Hunkial Beach. You could see the beach from every window of the house. It was a two minute walk down to the black sands because it was a black volcano sand beach. Um, it just, it was the same size as our house in Virginia. I mean, exactly the same house size, but it was 
it was a duplex. And my husband was like, no, no duplexes. The other issue is it had a very steep staircase. It was only a couple years old. It had the most beautiful furnishings I've ever seen. I would have liked it. Had it been me, that's the house I would have picked. The only one. I really like that one. The only thing is it needed re-landscaping. We would have had to put in a pool and um, we'd had to do something about turning the garage into some sort of outdoor space, like a, like a patio, like we have out here. Then the realtor said, we're going to show you a fabulous place, a fabulous, fabulous place. You're just going to fall in love with it. You're going to want to buy it. Now we had given them a price range. Okay. That we were looking at said so between this amount and this amount, this last place, this place they were showing us was right at the tip top of our budget. <laughs> we could have afforded it, but it was another one of those horror shows to me because the realtor obviously wasn't listening to us about what we wanted. We told him large piece of property gated, no stairs. And, um, Preferably in a rural type location, not right in the middle of Tamarindo. We did not want that. So anyway, long story short, they ended up uh, taking us to this place near Hunkiaw. We pulled up. There was a huge gate around the place. This husband and wife team, who very talented, had built the house. It wasn't a house. It was a bunch of buildings clustered around a swimming pool. The swimming pool was nice. The landscaping was nice. Every building was two stories with staircases all over the place. And there was a uh, guest house on the property, not as nice as ours, but it was there. And basically the family told me that what they did for a living is they rented their whole place out. It was listed on an Airbnb and VRBO and all the um, sites and rent places here. They said they rent it out, and when they rent it out, they moved into the guest house with their four children. And they had a tiny little one-room guest house. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. So I'm looking at all these buildings that aren't linked, and I'm looking at the fact that they don't have air conditioning anywhere but in the uh, master bedroom and in the kitchen living room. I'm going, uh-uh. Again, it was one of those things where... The layout, it was a beautiful place, but the layout was just messing with my ADD. I could not have handled that. I mean, I would have had to hire a construction crew and link all the buildings together, something, something, anything. We weren't really interested in running a Airbnb or anything else, so this place was just out. And the funny thing is, is this was the one the realtor was pushing us to buy and telling us, you know, tomorrow they're coming from... House Hunters International to film this place. Well, I never did see it on TV, so I'm not sure what they're even talking about. But it was one of those places is the best way to describe it. It was fancy, but not really adequate for us. The very last thing the realtor said to us is said, well, there's this house. It's been on the market forever. And it's come down a lot in price that uh, there's a contract on it, but I don't anticipate the guy is going to get financing for this. It's going to fall through, I have a feeling. Do you want to look at that and, and think about putting in a bid if it falls through? We said, well, sure, what the hell? We've already looked at five trillion houses in like a week. And as I'm telling you, the highlights are the lowlights only. I'm not telling you the other ones. Um, so we said, sure. So they took us to see the place, drove through this little rural area, Pulled up, there's an enormous gate and this 12 foot wall. There's a name to the estate on the little placard that has roses and seahorses on it. The su such and such estate. I'm not going to say the name because it is Googleable. <laughs> but um, we said, well, this might work, this might not work. This is probably another dead end. I'm thinking about going and pressuring my husband to get the duplex because it was within our budget. It was right at the ocean. The roads weren't as horrible as many places were. The gates parted. We drove in. We drove in under the most enormous mango tree I've ever seen, past a lovely little cottage, and up to the house. And we saw that deck, a tiled deck with the roof that's made out of, what is that? Teeth. The teak roof, which you can see behind me. That roof is teak. Um, well, that ceiling. 
and then we just fell in love. The enormous tile deck wraps around the house. The house is all one level. It's a ranch house. It had all kinds of special touches. All the plumbing is American. Many of the things, like the fans in here, speaking of fans, I want to turn that one on. Um, so many American fittings. It was pretty obvious that whoever had done this house had, had uh, used first class everything. Where I'm sitting now is actually a glass room. One half of our living room is a glass in room. That's where I am right now. This is one of my favorite places to sit here and read. If I'm having a day where I'm having health issues, my rocking chair and this corner, this glass in corner is where you will find me. So we looked at it. It was at a bargain base for price. It was listed on the website as a fire sale. So we said, this is it. This is the perfect, perfect, perfect house. Huge yards, back and front, big enough to put a pool in. And that was another big concern for us is we were going to have enough property to put a rather large pool in. So we sat for, I don't know, seven or eight days waiting for the other contract to drop out. And when it did, we put in a contract. Uh, it was very inexpensive. We ended up paying $160,000 for this place. The house is over 330, uh, over 3,000 square feet. We've got almost 2,000 square feet of nice um, deck on the outside with the, and we put a pool in the backyard, a pool and a hot tub, and completely re-landscaped the sad yard and remodeled the cabina, remodeled the bathrooms. Next one is gonna be remodeling the kitchen. I'm going back and forth on that, so I haven't started the remodel at all. The kitchen is huge. <laughs> so, um, long story short, now the county values the property with our improvements at over $400,000, which I'm not happy to be paying more taxes, but at the same time, I am happy that the, the property is appreciated enough. And uh, it was a good decision for us. Is buying good for everybody? Maybe. I always advise people to take a minimum of six months living in a rental in the area where you think you want to live. For us, that was Camarendo. But I also told my husband, after our many trips to Arnal, I would not mind living in Arnal either. That would be another good option. Arnal is a little bit uh, not quite so hot. But rainy season there lasts a lot longer. So there are some drawbacks. So when you go, ooh, when you go to buy, sorry, my hair's going to come down all of a sudden. Um, here, the best thing is to ask, ask everybody you know that you like who their favorite real estate agent is and why. We had something of a um, head knocking with ours because we told him, so look, we're old. We don't want to have to be climbing stairs every five minutes. We don't want stairs, we want a ranch house. It doesn't have to be the most luxurious thing on the planet, but it should be comfortable. It should be comfortable. Um, like I said, we had to do a lot when we first got here. We had to put a washer and dryer, had to put in a, a hot water tank. There was not one here. And um, we paid quite a bit to get a inspection done before, the, before we certified the contract and paid. And it was worth every penny every penny to find out every little fault and flaw in the house and how everything was constructed, what type of construction. It took 10,000 pictures. I have a copy of this somewhere. And um, that was good. But like I said, find the right agent because he did not listen to us one damn bit about what it was that we wanted. He started pushing properties that he thought we should want. I had asked him about one property. And he said, I don't want to show you that. You'll never buy it which we may well have. It was beachfront. It was a small cottage, but it was designed by a famous architect. It only had two rooms. But you know, the right house with two rooms would have worked fine for us. And it was a cottage. He said, I am not showing you that. That would be down at the bottom of your price point. And I'm like, I want to see it. Maybe it would not work for us, but maybe it might be just the thing. So find the right agent. If you don't like your agent, dump his ass and find somebody better. Uh, since that time, I found a couple people that are better agents that I would have used had I known. I should have. 
we ended up going with somebody from our church. <laughs> Don't ever do that. I, every time that I do business with somebody that's connected to a church, it goes sideways and they go way stupider than I ever dreamed they would do. Um, it was the same thing with this agent. At one point, he told us we had to put the money in escrow, and we said, no, we don't. It's sitting right in our investment account. We can access it at any time. Why should I pay you $800 to hold the money? The, buy the seller wasn't even asking for that. They just asked for proof that we actually had the money, had access to it, could get it in a hurry, and we were able to show them that. We were able to download enough of a, uh, enough of a kind of uh, you know, statement. Can you tell I'm sick today? Um, to be able to show him that we had the money it was not going to fall through. And I found out later that right about the time we put in our contract, a bunch of other Americans had put in theirs on this house. Like I said, it was a gym and it was a steal. Um, that's the thing to look at here. There are a lot of those here. There are a lot of undervalued properties that maybe don't have uh, marble floors or whatever, but that are well worth the effort. I swear, I've nagged my husband now to go back and buy the Italian place now that was down to about $100,000 and turn it into a rental. It's the most beautiful place. But um, he's stubborn like that. I don't think I can get him to do that. Anyway, I'm sorry that the chat is broken. It's the internet. Like I said, I've rebooted about a dozen times. If you must have good internet and move here, Move to a, a more uh, metropolitan area. Don't go out in the countryside like we did. I didn't know. I didn't know the internet because we're right we're right down the road from Villarreal where they have good internet and good everything. So you'd think if you were going within so many minutes of Villarreal that has everything that we would be able to get everything. But nope, we're out in the countryside, of some little village that uh, they still even argue what the actual name of it is. It was a good decision for us, though, and I hope that your real estate adventures go equally well, at least better than they do in the States. It was an eye-opening shock watching my daughter going through buying her house recently because I had no idea the properties in that area had gone up that much and that there was so much fierce competition that you had to put in an uh, a, uh, offer immediately or lose the house. Cheers. You guys have a wonderful day. I have 10 trillion loads of laundry to do, so you know what I'm going to be doing all day. I'm going to be sitting here folding laundry. Bye.